So in this video, we take an image which starts off fairly small, 512 by 512, we're using an empty latent image of 512 by 512. And as you can see, it is of course a an image of the Mona Lisa. And what we'll do is to transform it bit by bit until eventually we have a very large sort of 4K size image, which as you can see is, is actually pretty detailed both in foreground and background. And what I wanted to do with this one was to create a monumental statue. So that was part of the prompt. So the image was initially developed for a lecture in a course that uh, uh, covers advanced uh, SDXL and Comfy UI. And uh, this one is actually using Stable Diffusion 1.5. So we're actually starting off with a really small image and then doing some work on it in latent space and also using a, a, probably a generative adversarial network to enlarge it several times. I'll have this file and links to some of the other files uh, like the, the TI adapter in the description. Uh, what, what you start off with is the prompt on the left hand side and then you sort of work your way through. Uh, we are bringing in the uh, depth map here from the Mona Lisa and uh, that's using the T2i uh, adapter. And uh, then we move on to the K samplers, which are basically, and they're creating the initial framework for everything that we do afterwards. So they're kind of, if you are new to this, basically they're taking the prompt and the image prompt and then combining it to produce this image. And then we go another step here to produce a slightly larger image. Uh, this one is 1.5 times larger then 1.25 times larger. And it's this image here, which eventually becomes the really large image right at the end. And just for comparison, we have on this uh, scale here, uh, we've, got, we've got an image which is four times larger than the original image. So we've taken this image, put it through, I think an ultra sharp uh, file called the four times ultra sharp. Uh, this file comes from Stability AI. And this file is then used to increase the image. The, these two images are basically the same image. One of them I've just enlarged a little bit. This was probably more for the YouTube tutorial, uh, YouTube thumbnail. But uh, essentially what we started off with here was uh, an image four times larger. So it's the same image that you see here. And it is a four times upscale of the original render, the original render, the 512 by 512. And just looking at it, you can see there are some artifacts that come in with this particular uh, upscaler, particularly this sort of scale at sort of the 512 to um, uh, four times larger scale. So the original image, I think it looks pretty cool. I think for a 512, 512 uh, image from the the, uh, the the depth map, it actually produces a nice, a nice looking image. We then run it, this takes 20 steps and I've selected the samplers fairly carefully because they worked well with this particular image. One thing to notice is that we're saving the image here, but we're previewing it there. So there's a difference in color. So pay attention to that when you're using the file. The uh, second sampler just takes it from 20 to 40. And then we have a third sampler. We have increased the CFG scale. And uh, we've also increased the number. The number of steps goes from 40 to 90. So most of the steps actually take place here. And that's something I found useful that um, when you have a lot, when you have a large image, having a lot of steps sometimes actually produces the detail that you need. This image here is a little bit soft and possibly might have been a little bit less soft if we had gone in for a larger number of steps. But the steps are running from 20 to 20 to 40 and from 40 to 90. Most of the work is being done here. And then it's this image here where we are taking this image, which is still sort of fairly small. And then we are applying a four times upscaler using the four times ultra sharp uh, model to produce the final image which is this image here. I was very impressed by this final uh, upscaling because it does produce, I feel, a fairly detailed looking image, which is kind of re reminiscent of some of the digital art that I've seen in the past, which uh, has been done by uh, sk skilled humans. This is, to my mind, a fairly, fairly good looking image given the, the, the starting point. Now, um, the other things to mention, uh, I will just reiterate again, you've got some saved image, some save images, uh, 
um, sort of save images um, here and you've also got some preview images which do not save so bear that in mind uh, we've got the upscale here being pulled in by a uh, an upscale upscale image using model node and that node is pulling in a load upscale model which you've got to store this on your system you got to store this in the Ah, where do you put this? Let me just check where you put this because I need to mention this for the people who haven't been on the course. Okay, so we need to go to models and then we need to go to upscale models and that's where you would put the file here. So you can see I've got mine there. I've got a couple of other files, probably dozens that you could use. You can try out many different ones. And uh, what this one does is just basically pulling in the image, the finished image, and then um, placing it in the upscale uh, by uh, by model and then we're using the, the model uh, to upscale four times so that's the basic uh, setup there it's a very straightforward uh, kind of thing you might do inside of Photoshop but it seems to work very well using this particular upscaler the only other thing to mention is the uh, arrangement with uh, the dream shaper you can use whatever checkpoint you want uh, I'm just using uh, check the uh, dream shaper checkpoint um, and it works well with this type of work. Uh, and the control net here it has not been set to a full one. I've set it to 0.89. And that seems to generate a little bit more creativity in the image that we see here. Um, if we put it to one, it's a lot more fixed in terms of how it produces results. And um, yeah, just to mention, if you do decide to go with Mona Lisa, it does tend to produce uh, some semi not safe for work images because it, it sort of interprets all of this area here as, uh, as, as perhaps breast area rather than arms. So uh, be careful if you do try to use the, the Mona Lisa there, you might need to put some negative prompts there to prevent uh, not safe for work stuff if you if you don't like that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, obviously you want to play around with the minus depth map and um, change any of the settings that you want. But basically this is it here. I'll have this, uh, I'll have a link to this and uh, yeah, enjoy using it. Any questions, just leave them down below. And uh, yeah, I think you should have quite a bit of fun with this one.